Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is so good to have you here. Friends, I am so excited for this episode of Titans of Service now because I have got somebody who is just a real treat to have on the show. I have the designer of Service Portal himself, Mr. Nathan Firth. Nathan, so good to have you on the show, man. Hey, Robert. Thanks for letting me be on the show. As always, we start at the start. Tell us how you stumbled upon ServiceNow. So how I stumbled on ServiceNow. Back in 2010, I got a job as a software engineer working for a company called Mir3, which was a ServiceNow customer. And so as an engineer there, I had the opportunity to kind of play around a little bit with the platform and help out some of the members of the IT department to help set up ServiceNow. So that's kind of how I got my, my foot in the door. So, so you got your feet wet at Mir3, which was a ServiceNow customer, and I kind of saw you show up on the radar when you joined a Corio, right? So that was after I had already worked at ServiceNow for a couple of years. Oh, really? So you, you've done two tours at ServiceNow, huh? I have. Yeah, I joined ServiceNow originally back in January 2012, pre-IPO, when they were a much smaller company, and I think I was employee 600 or something, and uh, joined there originally working on the application development team. That I did not know. So you left ServiceNow, and then you, you decided to deal with the partner ecosystem, and so you, you went with a, to the Acorio crew, the A-team, huh? Yeah, yeah. I, I While I was at ServiceNow, I jumped over to the UI team for, for about six months, and and really enjoyed working there on the tablet application, the, the original tablet app that they came out with. And then had the wonderful opportunity to join Acorio where, you know, I was really able to focus on on building custom UIs, primarily at that time working on the CMS platform. Oh, the God bless us, the CMS platform, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of my big claims to fame while I was at Acorio was we built the very first complete portal on top of CMS that had no iframes with a complete service service catalog and fully responsive. And at that time that had never been done before. Wow. On CMS. On CMS. I mean, we ended up overloading all of the UI macros and UI pages for the entire service catalog to make it all based on bootstrap. It was, it was quite the feat, but it was a, uh, it was pretty cool portal. But that must have informed what came next in your career, right? Yeah. So we, I released a video that was demoing all of the work that we had done on CMS and, and several of the themes that we had built, and we posted it to YouTube. And one day, I, I got a notification that there was a comment on my post. And so we went and checked it, and sure enough, it was none other than Fred Luddy himself. Wow. And he, I think all he said was like, wow, cool, or something like that. Yeah, within, I think, two weeks, I ended up running into Fred at one of the ServiceNow user groups here in San Diego, and he offered to take me to lunch and presented the opportunity to spearhead the development of this brand new product he had uh, in the works, which uh, turned out to be Service Portal. How did that feel to have the man himself come up and give you an offer? Oh man, there, there was nothing like it. That is still one of the most memorable moments in my life. Do you, you must still have an aura from being in the proximity for that long, huh? Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was quite the honor. Back then, there was only four of us that were working on the Service Portal team. And I was brought in to be team lead to kind of do an, a lot of the initial architecture. And at that time, the only thing that they had built out was the concept of the widget. So you had the widget and it had, you know, HTML, CSS and client side and server side controllers, but there wasn't a full framework yet. So you didn't really have concepts around, you know, having a portal and themes and pages, containers, rows and columns. So a lot of that initial work was kind of what I was brought in to architect. How composed was the idea of service portal in your head? when you walked in the door that first day? I didn't fully know what I was getting myself into when I joined the service portal team because at that point, it was just this ability to be able to build a widget based on bootstrap markup. So when I walked in, it was really, let's learn, you know, take this time to really see what they've built. Let's not criticize it too much and really understand, you know, what, what is the direction that they're trying to go with this new product. And, you know, pretty quickly, I started to see the power of, you know, being able to build, you know, widgets that were based on Angular and that could communicate with one another. But where the product was really lacking was, you know, when you take a look at how customers actually build portals, it's, you know, it has nav bars and headers and footers, and it has all of these different pieces that need to be laid out, especially in, in a responsive bootstrap layout where that can look and function like anything. That's really where I kind of brought a lot of my UI design and web development background and expertise to say, you know, it's not just about being able to build, you know, widgets and components. It's really about building a UI system that allows 
uh, developers to really build any interface on top of ServiceNow. And did you have a particular type of developer in mind? Like, were you focused on somebody who was already a front end developer and was now being exposed to ServiceNow? Or were you hoping to build a system that was targeted to a, like a broader audience? I really wanted to open the doors for what UIs could look like. So, you know, with the CMS platform, you could have a UI designer design a really beautiful page template, but as soon as you went beyond the first homepage, everything was just iframes and you didn't really have the ability to expose catalog items, you know, record producers, forms, and lists short of an iframe. I really wanted to build a UI framework that, you know, enabled developers to make it look like anything. I'm going to ask you to put something in layman's term for us. I know there'll, there'll be several people on the call, myself included, that maybe don't really understand viscerally why having this all in iframes is not the best idea. <laughs> There's so much that goes wrong with, with just iframes in general. If you think back at how things worked in CMS, the iframes were dynamically trying to calculate height based on the content and they were never sized correctly. It, it also also didn't give you the ability to to customize what that user experience looked like. You can imagine someone filling out an incident form and that form happens to have 45 fields and it was never designed to look like a consumer form, you know, like you would expect from, you know, a, a consumer based web app. Instead, it was based to be, you know, essentially the tombstone of all of the information that, you know, a, a fulfiller or someone working on the help desk is viewing. So with Service Portal, this really gave us the opportunity to build an interface that really focused on the employee experience, the end user experience experience. So what were you most proud of when you developed Service Portal? I think it's the configurability of each widget. So the, the fact that each widget can have its own instance that can store all of the metadata needed for that widget to render, and then also pairing it with the option schema, which is what allows you to define dynamic options on each widget. This is unparalleled. I haven't, I haven't seen a system that gives you this level of flexibility anywhere else. This is a huge aspect of Service Portal. For those of you that are not familiar with this concept, this is where you can design, for example, a button and then drag it to the page and then say, this particular button goes to this hyperlink and I want it to be red and I want it to have this title. And then you drag the exact same widget to another place in Service Portal and say, now I want it to be blue and I want it to say this title and I want it to link to this location. So it's this ability to be able to uh, create highly reusable components and widgets in Service Portal. And that is something that I haven't seen in any other system and I think is very, very cool. Okay, so what happened after that? So uh, during one of the all hands meetings at ServiceNow, uh, Frank Slootman, who was the CEO at the time, had shared that he had gone on a road show and met with some of ServiceNow's largest customers and some of their CIOs. And one of the things that he had found was that, you know, most of the customers love ServiceNow, but the end users, the employees, they were not as quite big fans. You know, the end user, the fulfiller interface, it works great for an admin, but it just didn't quite do it for, you know, the end user. And so... This was a huge, huge priority was how do you develop an intuitive end user interface? And at that point, I looked at Service Portal and I go, we're actually sitting on the answer that happens to be one of the biggest needs amongst ServiceNow's customers. And so rather than stick around and fix bugs and maintain the product, I really wanted to be on the actual problem solving solutioning end of actually building portals on top of the platform. So with that, I left my post at ServiceNow uh, right before the Helsinki release and founded New Rocket, ServiceNow's premier end user experience, employee experience solution company. It was an interesting time, wasn't it? There was a watershed moment where everybody recognized how valuable it was for building workflows and just building, you know, simple form list view apps. But just behind that growth trajectory, everybody else was building badass web apps as well. And so the experiences everybody were coming to expect was just rapidly outpacing what ServiceNow is putting out as a front end. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, clearly you, you bet your lifestyle on it by <laughs> by founding New Rocket, right? Yeah, and yeah, we've come a, a long way since then. So now we have uh, 16 employees. We have a uh, headquarters here in San Diego and we have deployed uh, coming up on our 80th portal here. We've been in business almost four years and but yeah, we've, we've completed almost 80 portals at this point. Uh, especially to the degree you do them. Well, I'll tell you right now, I think we're juggling 25 portals just here in Q4. So the, you, you can kind of see the, the escalation of, of the amount of portals we're doing throughout the years. If somebody was looking at New Rocket, like what would be some of the first things they would notice about your offerings? 
Well, I would really hope that they notice our emphasis on employee experience or end user experience. When I take a look at this ServiceNow ecosystem, I see a lot of the developers got into ServiceNow through IT. Mm -hmm. And no offense to IT, you know, personnel, but if there's one thing they're famous for not being so good at, it's designing end user experiences or designing UIs and actual software engineering, front end web development. This is a has been a real big need in the market to to have it you know, a ServiceNow partner or an agency that really focuses on best practices for developing on the platform using Angular and more front-end web technologies, as well as an emphasis and focus on the user experience. For those of you who have watched my other YouTube videos, you'll know that I hate the concept of accelerators, but I do make an exception in this case, because in New Rocket's case, accelerators are about the UI. They're not making any kind of process assumptions. It's all about look and feel and the user experience. So I'd love, if you will, Nathan, to, to talk a little bit about some of the things you offer that are, you could classify them as accelerated. The service portal is kind of similar to WordPress in the sense that a blog can look like anything, but a blog is a blog and it has certain amount of capabilities. And that is also very true in the ServiceNow ecosystem in that most of the offerings that are going to be exposed on the portal it's going to be service catalog, knowledge, incident. You're going to have different types of record producers, but a lot of it is around core capabilities. And the way we present those ServiceNow core functions is going to be inside of a custom UI, a theme. But even there, you're going to start to notice that there's a lot of similarities from organization to organization. And that's where we've been able to build a library of themes that really help accelerate the design aspect of, of a portal. Now we do still offer, you know, full custom portals where we're doing, you know, everything from user research and focus groups and analytics and understanding, you know, the various personas. So we do still offer white glove tailored portal experience to that particular client. But many times we find that the, the requirements are quite similar from project to project. And that's where we're able to leverage our, our library of widgets and themes. Do you want to talk about some of the widgets that you've developed? Yeah. So we have a, a scoped application called Rocket Fuel. And Rocket Fuel is a collection of about 44, 45 different widgets that are UI components. So you can think of these as the building blocks of a custom theme. And so we take a very strong stance that ServiceNow needs to own all core capabilities. So when it comes to the service catalog, you know, the request forms, the, the forms, the list, the shopping cart, the order guides, these are ServiceNow capabilities that ServiceNow needs to own. But when it comes to headers and footers and tabs and nav, nav bars and side menus and things like that, they're just more UI. So we think of these as these are the building blocks of a custom theme. And we've developed the full library of these widgets. And this is what enables us to be able to go zero to 60 on a portal pretty rapidly once it's done with design. Do you have any widgets that talk to the catalog capability? Yeah, absolutely. So the majority of our widgets, you know, when it needs to interface with things like Service Catalog, we are leveraging all of their APIs so that they still get to own the logic. So 80 portals deployed, lots of accelerators built. Where do you go from here with New Rocket? Yeah, so we've been taking a look at what else we can do within the employee experience space. I don't want New Rocket to be known as the service portal company. I, I really want New Rocket to be known for the extravagant and amazing employee and end user experiences that we create. And, and I always say an end user because, you know, in, in a lot of cases, it's not just employees, you know, in higher education, you also have you know, students and alumni and, and faculty and things like that. So, and th those are definitely within our wheelhouse. So it's not just employee experiences, but, you know, I want us to be known for being able to make ServiceNow look just freaking amazing. And that is our goal. And so, with that, I feel like we have a lot of opportunities beyond Service Portal. On one hand, we are working on a brand new UI mobile framework that's uh, enabling us to be able to take all of the power that was in Service Portal, but being able to do it on a native mobile app. So this is a, a brand new offering that you will be seeing from New Rocket here shortly, where we'll be able to push out custom mobile apps into the store on behalf of clients that will be both on iOS and Android double clarity here when you say the store you're not talking about the service now store you're talking about the plain old mobile phone store your, your app yeah. store this and is the apple app store as well as the android play store if i'm the big boss of acme corp are you envisioning something where i could go to i could tell my people hey go to the app store and download acme core's mobile app and that'll be yeah. your app i think service now has done a really good job pushing towards mobile 
John Donahoe made the big, big announcement not that long ago about, you know, the new mobile capabilities and the mobile strategy. And I think that's great. But in my opinion, it's still very focused on the filler experience because we have approvals, we have checking statuses of tickets, and but it's all from people that know and love service now. And I just can't imagine Acme Corp telling all of its employees, hey, I know you don't know what service now is, but go into the app store and go download this app and it won't have our logo and it won't have our branding, but this is how you will manage your employee service management experience. Right, right. You know, and then it's like in 80 different languages across our global offices, please go to this URL and type in our company name at servicenow.com and then use your login and password. I just can't, I cannot imagine that happening. This is where we're going to be able to tell Acme Corp, we can launch the Acme employee mobile app directly into the app store and into the Android store. And it will be fully branded and it will have all of the core ServiceNow capabilities, except we can tailor it specifically based on their requirements. And because we're ultimately using all of ServiceNow's APIs around push notifications, authentication, single sign-on, we're not, we don't have to own that much logic on our end. We're still letting ServiceNow do the heavy lifting, but we've essentially built out, you know, service portal for mobile, but it's the, it's the UI layer. So it'll be full on catalog experience, knowledge reading experience, looking at my list of stuff experience. Yeah. And we can do it across department. We can do it across multiple service catalogs, multiple knowledge bases. And I'll share a little bit of kind of where we're going now. We're also starting to explore where else can we bring service now when we think about the end user experience. So one of these areas is, you know, being able to go to cities, local government, municipalities, and being able to launch 311 type apps where potentially it's, you know, an anonymous user, an unauthenticated user that can now submit there's graffiti on a wall or we, you know, there's a missing manhole cover and being able to submit those types of requests that traditionally you wouldn't think about being submitted to ServiceNow, but now being able to offer that directly on a native mobile app. What you just said there really sings to me because I've been really wondering, like, what is it going to take to scale ServiceNow so far outside of ITSM that, you know, our previous work in ITSM just looks like a rounding error because it's a great big world out there. I mean, there's way more work being managed than work being managed in ServiceNow. And I think of the scale of operations, like on the industrial side, I want them to hit industrial scale because they're going to get robots who are going to be submitting tickets via IoT. But there's also been this this kind of missing factor, and they're, they're getting really close with CSM, where the entire world could be your customer base. And what if I want that to be my front door? I just have Acme Corp, and I sell widgets to the general public. And what if they want to, like, have a support experience on acmecorp.com, and what powers that? Now, I know a few people are doing it, but not a lot of people are doing it at scale. Is that what you're trying to solve? Yeah, but once we leverage mobile, you're able to reach the audience at a different level. So when you have the employees that are in office working on their company laptop, they can always go pull up the portal. But the moment you're able to get into their pocket from a mobile device, there's a different level of interaction that we're able to reach. And I think that also enables us to reach a completely different demographic. And in this case, you know, with what I just mentioned, this also enables us to potentially reach the citizens of a local city. They don't have a clue who ServiceNow is, and they certainly would never log into the ServiceNow interface. And so this enables us to bring ServiceNow core functions of the platform and bring it where they traditionally would never have any interaction with ServiceNow. That's a game changer. Yeah, I, I think so. I'm, I'm really excited. How far along are you? We have a fully functioning proof of concept and we're working on putting together some videos that's actually going to document what we've built so far. But I would say at this point, we're, we're about 95% there. Nine, we have 95%. Almost, we're cleaning up the UI at this point. We already have push notifications and authentication. We already have interactions uh, across service catalog and knowledge. So I feel like we're pretty close. Does it facilitate that kind of... Um the non-user user like CSM does? Yeah. As soon as you are filling out any kind of a form in ServiceNow, it does need to get associated with a user. So this is where we can either use an anonymous user that just lives in the system, or we can just dynamically generate a user directly in the instance so that there is still that traditional incident caller relationship. So ServiceNow does still require that there is a user, but 
we can work around that by either generating that user or by leveraging an existing account in the system. If you had to create a new security model to manage, like it's, it's a totally different class of user experiencing the system, right? But you, yes, have, but you have these building blocks in the back end that were basically biased against a very specific user experience. Yeah. So our goal with this is very similar to what we've done with Service Portal. We want our design team to be able to work directly with the customer to design a beautiful experience. And then for us to be able to deliver that and have it still leverage all of the core ServiceNow APIs. So there's not this whole brand new platform that we now have to maintain. It's primarily around the user experience and building out the UI components that then communicate back to ServiceNow. Man, how, how soon uh, are, are you going to be able to showcase this off? We're showcasing it already. In front of customers, but uh, the broader ServiceNow community? Uh, we should have a brand new page up on our website and uh, hopefully a video to go along with it uh, within the next three weeks. Man, you're telling me you were working on this. I didn't know you were like working on this, you know? <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> we, don't, we don't sleep around here. We're always working. Oh, that's awesome, man. Let me pose this question and how could how could the service now community help you bring this crazy game changing feature to scale i think one of the challenges is even at service now is they have a lot of capabilities but a lot of customers don't necessarily know all of what's available and we've heard from a number of, sort of the solution consultants at ServiceNow that are working directly with customers and customers are coming up with questions saying you know how can we accomplish this and these are problems that we've already solved but if the SCs that service now don't know that there's partners in the ecosystem that, uh, that have solutions to some of these problems, then it actually hurts service now because uh, we found in a number of cases where some of these customers ended up taking some of those features and end ending up going with a different partner with a different platform altogether. We're kind of getting laid into the show and I, maybe it's a terrible Pandora's box to open this late, but you're not going to conflict with any of the new uh, design paradigm we we're, we're starting to hear whispers of, are you? Hey, Robert, I'm really glad you brought that up because this is something that's definitely on our radar. So yes, it, it is absolutely true. ServiceNow is working on a brand new UI framework. I've had a chance to actually check it out myself. And the one thing I'll say is I don't believe this to be a replacement for Service Portal. The brand new framework is called Seismic, or that's the internal code word for it. And Seismic is they're shadow not, DOM wait, components. They're not going to send the black attack helicopters after us for saying that, are they? I don't think so. Okay. I mean, well, just nobody, nobody tells Service Now anything. We're just going to talk about this amongst friends. Yeah. <laughs> yes. They they did show it at Knowledge last year. Okay, cool. And so they actually, they talked about it. Okay. Before. So we're safe. But yeah, Robert, thanks for asking. Uh, you know, this is something that's definitely on our radar, which is, you know, the new ServiceNow UI framework. It is true. They have a new component based UI framework coming out, well, hopefully in Orlando. But one of the things about the new framework is it is based on Shadow DOM components, which means they are configurable components, but you can't theme them as easily. In fact, it's based on what I've seen so far, it is going to be very difficult to build custom UIs with this in the same way that you do in Service Portal. So they may provide a, a list component and a form component and plot component, but more or less they are what they are and they will expose some level of flexibility as far as what you can customize, but you won't be able to build the same type of interfaces that you're able to build with Service Portal. So I think you're still going to see a ServiceNow investing in Service Portal. We're still going to be seeing lots more applications being built on top of the Service Portal platform because that's the only solution that I've seen so far that gives you that level of flexibility. We're facing an identity crisis where it's like flexibility versus rigidity in terms of out-of-the-box ServiceNow applications. I, you know, I think one of the, the challenges with Service Portal has been you can do anything. And as soon as you give customers that level of flexibility, it also comes at very high support costs. With the new UI framework, you're going to get certain level of components that are going to ship with it. And you're going to be able to place these onto a page. But I believe what you're going to see initially, at least in Orlando, is primarily going to be based around the workspace experience and and being able to maybe rearrange some of the widgets on the page but right. it's not at us it's not a standpoint yet where you're going to be able to build out your entire portal using seismic so you think maybe it might be one of those solutions where it's it's not as mm, customizable as service portal is but it's more customizable than the current workspaces are correct and my take on this is they're not trying to replace Service Portal. Mm -hmm. They're trying to provide an alternative to the existing UI. And the best analogy to this I can make is when you think about before iPhone came out, right? We all had nine buttons on, on the screen, you know, and, you know, zero to nine. 
and then all of a sudden the iPhone came out where the interface now all of a sudden could be anything, right? The iPhone completely revolutionized how we use phones in that the interface could be unique to wherever you were at. Now, when you take a look at where we've been in service now in the core platform up to this point is everything was list and forms. And I think that's where they're going with Seismic is now every application can build out its own interface that can be more specific to the functions of that, of, of that application. But I don't see this as the replacement for Portal at all because I think this is more about building fulfiller interfaces and, and workplace experiences that are very specific to the individual functions of the, the personnel and the staff that's going to be performing those functions. Nathan, I thank you so much for coming on and, and giving us especially that insight. I think there's been a lot of worry, frankly, about where this stuff is going. So uh, I'm glad you're able to, to, to come on and share that with me and my audience. All right, with that, we're going to wrap this up. Nathan, I'm going to give you the last word. Yeah, thanks so much, Robert, for having me on the show. Really enjoyed it. Thank you, bud. We'll talk to you soon.